Action. Okay. So we just said about the secret place, haven't we? There. So if I said, what's the definition of a secret place? What's the definition of a secret? How do you define secret? Something to not be told. Exactly. Something to not be discovered. It's never going to be out there in the open, is it? Yeah. So you can only be told a secret by someone in the know, can't you? Yeah. So, who is this person that's in the know? Who, who's the person that knows all the secrets of the universe? Jesus. God. Correct. Who's the person that knows all the things that we need to know in our own lives? We need to know where we're going to live, this, that and the other. Um, jobs, marriage, everything. Who's the one that knows what is right for us and what is wrong for us? Because we don't necessarily know, do we? No, no, no. We don't say. No. We, might, we might think we know. Forgive them for the, don't know what they do. Yeah. yeah we don't. That, I we actually, don't, we don't, don't have a clue. Sorry to interrupt you, Phil, but I was I was looking at something last night and it said Jesus did so much. He taught what he could, and then he says, "All the Spirit will do the rest." Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we needed the Holy Spirit yeah. to learn to teach us. Yeah. Well, when when Jesus rose from the dead and he went up to to be with God the Father, sat at the right hand of the Father, as it says in Scripture, he said, "I will not leave you orphans. I will not leave you fatherless and comfortless." So, and according to Jesus, I mean, who, who in this room would love to have Jesus sat in this room, physically oh, yeah. sat in this room? Yeah. That would be amazing. Wouldn't I think it? Yeah. It is. Yeah. But and then <laughs> yeah. when you when you drive it home, he'd be sat in the passenger seat with you. Yeah. Right. And then sat on your couch with you, yeah. or making a cup of coffee Aww. with you, that would be amazing, wouldn't it? Yeah. it but according it to Jesus, is, the state of affairs that we've got now, if we can enter into it, is better than that. Yeah. Wow. Because when he said, he said, it's expedient for you that I go away. Because if I do not go away, yeah. not, the Holy Spirit will not come down. Yeah. Yeah. So whereas when Jesus was on his ministry on the earth, there was just one Jesus walking around, there was just one person in Israel. He wasn't in Africa at the same time, he wasn't in... Scandinavia, he was in his room doing his miracles in his ministry, but when he rose from the dead and then he sent the Holy Spirit down on the day of Pentecost, now the Holy Spirit is in Africa right now. Mm. The Holy Spirit right now will be convicting someone in Argentina of sin. He'll be, he'll be baptising someone in the Holy Spirit in Peru right now. Yeah. Someone in uh, in Denmark will be being spoken to by the by God now about marriage or life mm -hmm. or children. Or it. The oh, Holy Spirit is all encompassing all over the earth. So we're talking about this secret place. I'm just going to read you a a little bit of scripture from Psalm 91. It's basically, I'll, just go, I'll read you the first verse and when you go home I'd encourage you to read it because Psalm 91, which is a wonderful psalm, my favourite psalm, and it has the number signature of God in it because 91 is 13 times 7. And it's, I'll read you the first verse. He that dwelleth, right, take every word of God is pure, right, so we have to stop on every word. He that dwelleth, not visiteth, but dwelleth, so there's no promises for the visitors. Yeah. It's wonderful just to visit it, but the promises are for those who dwell in it. Yeah, absolutely. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, not the open place. There's an open place of the Most High as well. All Christians are in the open place, so to speak. If you know the Most High, you're with him, aren't you? Mm -hmm. But like in the Old Testament, they had the outer court, and they had the inner court, and they had the Holy of Holies. And the common people could go in the outer court. But only the priest mm. once a year could go into the Holy of Holies. Mm. So it says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Do you know that God's got a shadow? And the Bible says later in the New Testament, there's no shadow of turning with God, right? So he does not have a shadow of turning, but he does have a shadow mm. of protection. He doesn't have a shadow of turning, because when God says, I'll do this, he, he means it. He means it. He'll definitely do it. He's not going to turn his back on it or break a promise. He's not like a human being that says he's going to do something and then doesn't. Mm. Even with the best will in the world, sometimes human beings promise you things. And they may even want to fulfil the promise, but may not be able to. Mm. May not be strong enough. May not be clever enough. May not be whatever. But God doesn't have a shadow of turning, but he does have a shadow of protection. And just like in, if it was a hot beating down sun on you, you'd want a shadow of protection, wouldn't you? Mm. You'd want to live in that shade, wouldn't you? And God's got a place of shade for us so that we're shielded. But even in the midst of tribulation, you have peace. So it's like, to be a Christian, you've got to be a genius. You've got to be able to cope with two fundamentally opposing concepts and still function. So if I said to somebody in the world, um, you're going to go through some tribulation, but be joyful in it. They'd say, what, you, could I be joyful in tribulation? Mm. That's a contradiction in terms. Mm. If I said, you're going to go through something hard, but rejoice. 
they'd laugh at you, wouldn't they? Yeah. So am I supposed to rejoice if it's hard? I'm gonna feel, I'm gonna feel depressed. I'm gonna feel hard pressed, aren't I? I'm gonna feel, I'm gonna feel uh, yeah. negative. Yeah. We can all be positive when it's positive, can't we? But can you be a Christian genius, which is the only type there is? Someone who can live in the spirit realm whilst operating in a physical body. Because the flesh, the Bible says the spirit and the flesh are enmity towards mm -hmm. one another. It says the spirit lusts against the flesh. Two and the flesh lusts two. against the spirit. Yeah? Yeah. These two are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. So what it's saying is that you're in the Garden of Eden and you're in between those two trees every day of your life. Mm -hmm. right? It says there were two trees in the midst of the garden. There was many trees all over that garden, probably hundreds of trees, but two in the middle. The tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And every time you walk over to the tree of life, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is only stones throw away, trying to tempt you. Mm -hmm. right? But you've got to make that choice for the tree of life. But Satan's always going to try and tempt us, isn't it? Mm -hmm. they're, they're in the middle of the garden. And every time you walk over to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil to take control of your own life, to do your own thing, the tree of life's always going to be there to convict you. So it's temptation. Or conviction, temptation or conviction. And we've got to be people that live by conviction, haven't we? And that's how we're going to enter the secret place of the Most High God. It's in Song of Solomon, it says about the secret place of the stairs as well. So not only does God have a secret place, He has secret stairs that lead to the secret place. So you, first of all, you've got to find the stairs. You've got to find the steps that lead you to God. And the stairs are secret as well. If the stairs were everywhere, and in an open place, then everybody would just walk up and find the secret place, wouldn't they? Mm. But Christian, most Christians don't find the secret place. If you saw stairs in the middle of a forest, in the middle of nowhere, that would intrigue you, wouldn't it? Mm. You think, where did they lead? You'd probably just want to climb up them, wouldn't you? Mm. <laughs> and then everybody would find the secret place. Then mm. it's not, but it's not for just the curious. Godly, godly curiosity isn't a sin. It's good to be curious about God and to, mm. to seek God. But it goes beyond curiosity. Yeah, it goes into conviction. Because the, the secret place of the stairs, it won't just be found by curious people, it will be found by convicted people who are really co committed. And when you find those steps that are going to take you to God, so ask yourself in your own life, what are the steps that I need to take? What's my secret place of the stairs that's going to lead me to the secret place of God? So if you have things in your life... If you have, if you have things... <coughs> in your life that's, that's separating you from God or that's, that's blocking out the light of God obviously you have to get them out of your life don't you then you need to put secret place of the stairs at work in your life and say Lord what steps can I take to get into that secret place and you're going to find that it's the same thing that's been done for 2000 years by the apostles by every, every true follower of Jesus Christ does it the same way and, and that those, those things that we do the secret place of the stairs, each step, it's prayer, it's fellowship with saints, it's the word of God, it's worship music rather than worldly music. These are the stairs that you must ascend to get to the secret place of the Most High God. And in that secret place, it's an untouchable place in God. In Psalm 91, read it when you go home, you'll find that in that secret place, nothing can hurt you. Nothing can hurt you. You know, if there was a hurricane... It might knock everybody else's house down, but you'd be safe. It will not come near you. Yeah. But that's only for those who dwell, not visit. Most Christians don't even visit, but it's only for those who dwell in the secret place of God. So I would encourage us all not just to have a curiosity about God, but to have a conviction and to say, Lord, I'm going to do whatever it takes, whatever those steps are for me, that, that secret place of the stairs. It may be going for a prayer walk with God. First step's repentance. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the step to even being a Christian is repentance. You have to repent. The foundation. That's the foundation. Yeah, a thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. Yeah, that's it. So once once we've repented of sin, then ask God, what, what do you want me to implement in my life, God? Even if it's like a, not a formula as such, but like just godly things that we've got to do to keep the world in the soap and to put God's stuff in, in every, every area of our lives, you know. And that's the way we'll enter into his glory. And that's the way he'll move amongst us in ways that you know, we've never seen before. And um, So commit yourself to that, the secret place. Not the open place, but the secret place instead. Amen. 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 Amen.